In the first part of the story of Black Tusk, you were presented with the origins of Black Tusk, their knowledge on green poison pre-outbreak and how they invaded the United States up until the invasion of the capital, Washington DC. However, we're still left with many questions. Who is behind the shadowy organization that hired Black Tusk? What is Black Tusk planning to do during and after the invasion of Washington DC? In this faction brief, I will continue to sketch a timeline and dive in depth on every detail important to their story. Before continuing the video, as an added way to increase my income on YouTube, I have joined affiliate programs of companies and products that I support. The affiliate links can be found in the description. You can support me by using the supporter creator code MastermindsHD in the Epic Games Store and by clicking on or buying games and other products through the Kingwin and Amazon links. On top of that, I link to each of the products I use in my setup as a content creator, so if you're considering using these products, you can support me by following the link. I will only recommend products and services I use myself. Thanks for your support and enjoy the video. Agents arrived at Washington DC reeling from devastating attacks. Pushing out from their main base of operations, the White House, the division started pushing back the hostile factions to their headquarters. After receiving intel from a hyena informant, the division discovered Alice was being held at the World Bank Group. Being their primary objective, the division rescued Alice from the class of the hyenas. Soon, Black Tusk got word and Schaefer received new orders from his supervisor. Situation's changed. I need you to back off the division. Back off how far? All the way. Well, that's pretty fucking far. But you got a problem with that bar? Well, hell no, boss. I'm just surprised as all. It's not like you to call off a hunt. Look, you know how it goes in this business. Today's enemies are tomorrow's friends. If there's a way we can all come out of this as teammates, well, so much the better. You really think the division is gonna play ball? It doesn't seem unreasonable to expect them to keep doing their fucking jobs. That's not answering the question. You know how it goes in this business. With Alice turning up, Black Tusk went back to their previous plan. With his cover intact, Alice calls a meeting at the White House confirming his reasons for returning. The broad spectrum and their virus were sent to Washington DC as a continuity of government measure and only he has intel on its location. Ah, there we are. I wanted to thank you personally. If it wasn't for you, I'd still be at the mercy of those hyena assholes. We all owe a debt of gratitude to the Division and the sacrifices you've made to keep our country together. You're the doer of deeds, as Roosevelt once put it. Now it's my responsibility to direct those deeds toward an even greater good. As Agent Kelso suspected, Samples of a broad-spectrum antiviral medication were sent to D.C. as a continuity of government measure. Let me be clear. We're talking about a way to combat viral infection. Polio, influenza, dengue fever, a common cold, green poison, not a vaccine, a cure. I know where the package is located, but to access it, I'll need the briefcase I was carrying aboard Air Force One. We believe the briefcase is with the true sons in the Capitol. Oh, then get it back. I don't care how you do it, just get it done. If we're going to get this country back on track, we have to be willing to do things that won't be popular. But I'm not here to woo voters. I'm here to get shit done. And I expect you are too. Hell yeah. After the Division re-established the Shade Network, they launched assaults on the Hyena and Outcast Stronghold, ending in the final assault on the Capitol building, where the True Sons were most likely holding the briefcase. Succeeding in retrieving the briefcase and defeating the True Sons, the Division returned the briefcase to Alice.
Amidst the division's celebration, Black Tusk besieged the capital in the invasion of Washington DC, forcefully capturing strategic locations such as headquarters and strongholds of the previous factions. Reclaiming these locations, Black Tusk were able to collect the equipment they supplied the hyenas with, collect weaponized forms of DC-62 from the True Sons, and hold a grasp on the factions of Washington DC. Each former headquarters, stronghold or hostile position was now controlled by units of Black Tusk under the leadership of respective lieutenants. Upon the receival of an unknown transmission, it appeared Ellis allowed the BTSU access to a secretive storage facility underneath the White House, the location of the broad spectrum antivirals. Is that all of it? Looks that way, Chief. They're just sending in the doses for the top brass. All right, then let's get it somewhere safe. We'll hold it at Tidal Basin until I get word from the boss. Wyvern, this is your baby now. You take damn good care of it. Understood. Nothing gets near this container, not even a fucking squirrel, you got me? Understood. Give me that satellite phone. I want to share the news myself. Go on, give him your phone. Let him have his moment. Radek, codename Wyvern, was tasked by Schaefer to retrieve the batch of 24 samples, distribute them over two separate cylinders, and protect the Warhound escorts as they returned to Black Tusk stronghold in the Washington DC Reservoir Tidal Basin. Black Tusk's plan A was to securely extract the cylinders using their Black Hawks. As soon as the division got wind of Alice's betrayal, they launched an assault on the compound and after circumventing the turret defenses and reaching the communications hub, discovered Black Tusk's plan and prevented it by destroying the helicopters. Shortly after, the division intercepted and secured one of the convoys. Switching to plan B, Black Tusk planned on extracting the cylinders by hovercraft until an unfortunate JTF helicopter was struck by their guided missile system and crashed into one of the turbines, effectively stranding them. Schaefer ordered Wyvern to extract on foot, but in her rage, Wyvern guided the missile launchers to target the White House in her plan to destroy the division's main base of operations. The division managed to successfully recover the second convoy, defeat Wyvern and abort the missile launch on the White House. As the BTSU regrouped to create a new plan, Black Tusk started looking for a new forward operating base and invaded Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport, an abandoned graveyard to thousands of desperate civilians after the airport was coded in DC-62. From this location, Black Tusk could coordinate their operations and provide supplies to the front lines. The division got wind of Black Tusk's invasion of the airport and launched an assault, eventually leading to the division's victory. However, the division wasn't able to revel in their victory long. Intel revealed Ellis, still valuable to Black Tusk, was extracted to the presidential compound in the United States Marine Corps support facility at Camp White Oak, Maryland. In his time there, Ellis discovered his earlier revealed suspicions to be true. Black Tusk were using him as no more than a puppet to their new world order. I'm sorry, miss. I'm not sure what this is about, but I believe I've done everything that was asked of me. Nobody thinks otherwise, Mr. Ellis. That's reassuring. As soon as the capital is fully secured, it will be time for you to step forward and take charge. I'm ready. I'm sure you are. I'll be in contact soon. In his time at Camp White Oak, Ellis wrote four memoirs, putting his thoughts on paper. Davis tried to warn me. I should have fucking listened to him. The man was not a good man, but he was smart. He knew what these people were. He was too smart to outright question me. Knew I probably would have found some way to fuck him over if he did, but he knew what these people were, at least better than I did. I underestimated him. I won't make that mistake again. I just want to be president. Is that so much to ask? Waller and Mendes. I'm a better man than both of them put together. They are relics from a different era. They were too soft and too indecisive. They weren't willing to make the hard choices. Hell, they weren't willing to make any choices. Not any that really mattered. Even Waller ordered Directive 51 that wasn't a real choice. It wasn't something he was excited about or understood. It was a means to an end. A tool that he had at his disposal. And that idiot wasted it. An army of elite soldiers with unlimited resources and power and he sends them to protect civilians and clean up the streets. To build garden boxes and grow tomatoes. What a fucking waste. If it was up to me in the beginning, it would have never gotten this bad. We could have recovered from Amherst's bullshit in a month. 
Quarantine the sick, burn the cash, get Sarah to find a fucking cure and call it a day. It's not that hard. Collateral damage is always acceptable, especially if it ensures a victory. Waller was too much of a pussy to nuke New York when we had the chance. And now, it's up to me to clean up his mess. But his fucking agents are getting in my way. They're supposed to work for me, dammit, I'm the president. When you sign up for a secret fucking society, you expect to meet members of that society. Instead, I'm trapped here in a fucking bunker with what's left of the BTSU and all their fucking bullshit. I was supposed to be the hero and now thanks to these jarheads, I'm going down in history as the worst president in history. FDR bombed hundreds of thousands of people and he's still a hero because the New Deal saved the economy. But President Ellis will be remembered as the asshole who went to his retreat in the woods while Camelot burned. The JTF sent two units to assault the compound with division assistance to capture and retrieve Ellis, so he could answer for his crimes. However, Black Tusk was prepared for an assault. As the first JTF unit was entering the camp, the bridge they were walking on was destroyed, quickly dispatching the entire unit. Without delay, Black Tusk, under leadership of BTSU's Galveston, would extract Alice. As the division passed the USMC support facility and reached the bunker's tunnel, Galveston's unit escorting Alice just managed to slip away. Diverting around the ridge, the division cut through the lake house to Holly Lodge in an attempt to regroup with the second JTF unit. But the second unit was eliminated by Black Tusk, allowing Alice to make a narrow escape. Galveston stayed behind to ensure Ellis's safe transport, but in doing so, it cost him his life. Although on-site Black Tusk intel and equipment would be put to good use, failing to capture Ellis was a major complication for the division. The division acquiring the broad spectrum antivirals was a huge setback for Black Tusk. The defeat at Tidal Basin, Washington National Airport and Camp White Oak cost Black Tusk not only the antivirals, but also operatives, resources and multiple BTSU members, Wyvern and Galveston. Still, attaining the broad spectrum antivirals was only one part of the formula. The second part of the formula was to find a way to mass produce the antivirals to provide enough samples to an entire populace. A report confirmed the research and development team from the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA, developed a device capable of synthesizing antivirals before they were evacuated. This is a perfusion bioreactor. Thanks to you, we've got broad spectrum antiviral medication that can prevent another outbreak. But we don't have anywhere near enough to go around. This thing will solve that problem. It's essential that we recover it. But there's another problem we need to solve first. We're pretty sure Black Tusk is using that drill to extract the bioreactor. They definitely don't want us to have it. So disappoint them. Wreck their plans. Do whatever it takes to make sure that equipment ends up in the right hands. Did you see the report? I saw it. Then you understand why this op is a top priority. Yeah, I'm on it. We can't afford another shit show. I said I'm on it. Soon as the division gets wind of this, I'll handle it. Once the hovercraft arrives, I'll assume command and will extract it ASAP. Many of you may not know me, but over the next month or so, you will. You may have heard rumors about what happened to the Tidal Basin team. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Wyvern went off the reservation and cost the entire operation. We're not that team, though. We're gonna get this done, and get it done right. We have a situation. This is from a few days ago. Black Tusk. We're coming up on the building. The marker is our agent. We lost contact with her shortly after this. Can we take a look at the surveillance footage she transmitted? Let me switch over. What are they after? At a guess, the DARPA labs and the sublevels. There are all kinds of Defense Department prototypes down there. This can only be bad news. The question is, how bad? We need to know. Which is where you come in, Agent.
Brenner was tasked by Schaefer to assume command of the operation to ensure the process would run smoothly. The Pentagon was evacuated long before Black Tusk arrived, but on-site security systems were proving difficult to work around. Reports suggest that the bioreactor was located in the lower levels of the Pentagon, the DARPA Bioengineering Laboratories. Pentagon systems are giving our techs hell. Are you going to keep giving me excuses? No excuses, just information. It's slow going, brute forcing our way through everything in our path. Cut the bullshit. Best estimate. 15, 20 hours. Make it 12. I want access to that reactor by morning. Status report. We made it to the biolab. The project equipment looks undisturbed since the evac. Bioreactor? Accounted for. Looks like they finished it. No antivirals to use, though. We knew that. We'll have to find a way to get back the ones Wyvern lost. Black Tusk's mysterious benefactor supplied many military organizations, including DARPA. Prototypes of the division's revolutionary smart technology, Shade Tech, as well as Black Tusk's technology, were on site in the research and development department. Holy shit, I can't believe they left all these behind. Are these our drones? The militaries. Though that's a bit reductionist. Reality is that our benefactors supply a lot of organizations. Well, ain't that some shit? Yep. Stay on the winning side. Decide with the best tools. Hot damn! Look at me, everyone! I'm a division agent. Put that shit down. I don't need you accidentally activating a failsafe on a seeker mine and blowing us all up. Can that really happen? Fuck if I know. Do I look like division to you? Black Tusk located a bioreactor to the bioengineering department of the DARPA labs. In order to extract it, Black Tusk set up a military grade high power drill in the center of the courtyard of the Pentagon. I need that drill up and running. Status on the airlift. Lowering the supports into place now. That drill going to be big enough to pull out the bioreactor? Yeah. And if it's not? You know I'm not opposed to using explosives. No, Figs. I don't need you breaking what we came for just because you love to blow shit up. ETA on getting the drill hoist in position. Two hours at the top end. Roger that. I want the drill up and running in the next 10 hours. And I want to be pulling shit out in the next 24. We're on a timetable. Move it. Sir, yes sir. Ben Mega Reinhold, one of the operatives in charge of accessing this surface, found blueprints of an abandoned Cold War tunnel network underneath the DARPA labs. In case plan A wouldn't work, this would be plan B. Got something for you from the blueprints we pulled from the servers. What do you have? Looks like there's a whole series of maintenance tunnels that run underneath the building. But better than that, looks like there's some kind of connection that runs all the way out to the helipad. No shit. I guess that's our plan B. Agent Sanders reported Black Tusk's presence and the division was soon on site. However, there was no intel on the status of their operation and location of the bioreactor. Breaching and attacking Black Tusk's patrols on the west side of the Pentagon, the division entered the compound and made their way to the center courtyard. Using Black Tusk's own equipment against them, the division planted explosives on the mud pump, cooling system and vertical motor, effectively sabotaging Black Tusk's drilling operation. With Plan A sabotage, the division headed to the Pentagon's naval wing to download the project list from the Pentagon servers. In an attempt to prevent the division from downloading the project list, Reinhold set up EMP generators. Although he was defeated and the generators were destroyed, the Pentagon servers suffered the same fate. Downloading Black Tusk files from the command post on the roof was the only other option to locate the bioreactor. A battalion of Black Tusk operatives with support from a Marauder, a heavily armored quadcopter, attempted to prevent the division from extracting the data. It proved fruitless as the division managed to defeat them and download the data. Navigating through flood prevention systems, the research and development labs and the robot testing grounds, the division reached the bioengineering labs where the bioreactor was located. Black Tusk were in the process of extracting the bioreactor on a barge through a tunnel network. After breaking through Black Tusk's battalion, the division secured the loading bay and transported the bioreactor to the surface using an outdated freight elevator. Brenner, watching over the helipad, made an effort to stop the division, but it didn't matter and a bioreactor was extracted to the research facility of the White House. 
This changes everything. Well, it will. If we're gonna produce enough antivirals to make a difference and be sure that what we produce is effective and safe, we need someone who knows what they're doing to supervise the entire process. We can't afford to take risks. But that's a problem for tomorrow. Today, let's celebrate your victory. Because it's a big one. Black Tusk, now without the broad spectrum antivirals and perfusion bioreactor, was looking into the third part of their formula. A virologist capable of either creating antivirals and operating a bioreactor or weaponizing another virus. Dolores Jones, a Black Tusk commander stationed in Coney Island, New York City, was contacted by the first wave's prodigal son and the largest threat to the division, Aaron Keener. So what's the deal here? You're just going to give us Janenko? Yes. And what do you want in return? I've got something in mind. Don't worry, it's a reasonable trade. I'll send you the details. From what I've heard about you, you don't strike me as reasonable. You can't believe everything you hear, Dolores. Jones, we're not on a first-name basis. You're not my friend, Kina. You're a tough cookie, Jones. I respect that. He's not infected, is he? Why would he be infected? You play in the dirt, you tend to get dirty. A virologist without a proper lab? I expect him to have a virus. He's clean. But if you're worried about it, just put him in quarantine. <sighs> you really ain't making it easier to trust you. I'm sure you've got resources at your disposal. Stick him in a box and have your medics give him a once over. We'll see. He's as healthy as anyone can be in this situation. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Vitaly Chernenko, the only virologist known to be able to create a vaccine for the green poison, was kidnapped by Keener months ago. During his captivity, Chernenko was forced to engineer a virus more lethal than green poison, Project Eclipse. After months of trials, he succeeded in creating it. As Chernenko in Keener's custody would only cause him problems, Keener contacted Black Tusk, offering them Chernenko in return for a prize to be named later. Once in Black Tusk's hands, Chernenko was placed in a quarantined prison cell in the middle of Coney Island ballpark until further instructions from Keener. You put Chernenko in the chamber? Precaution. He could be infected. Okay. Any idea when we're gonna close this deal? Who the fuck knows? Keener told us to stay put and watch his asset until further notice. You and your boy scouts will just have to wait. How do you know he's not playing us? New York's my court. That bitch wants to play, he better be fucking ready. For now, I'm just here to make sure Kina holds up his end. Sounds like a flimsy ass plan if you ask me. Yo, I didn't ask you. Is that what I think it is? Yeah. That's not one of ours. It wasn't long before this alarming intel would reach the division. Launching a rushed operation, the division penetrated perimeter and made their way through the park. Dodging mortars from a mobile launcher nearby, the division crossed the pier and reached the ballpark. Sumner, in charge of Chernenko's protection, put up heavy resistance using Black Tusk's automated defense system, but it was futile and Chernenko was extracted to Washington DC. As Chernenko was extracted, hostile radio was intercepted. The cleaners under leadership of Vivian Conley, one of Keener's allies, and Keener himself were assaulting Black Tusk's forward operating base in the amusement park. Chernenko secured. Hostile radio intercepted. This is it. Move in and incinerate the Black Tusk. He played us. He's working with the cleaners. Ma'am, Keener's close. His radio signal is coming from inside the park. Everyone, with me. Let's kill this motherfucker. As the assault was in progress, Jones started her hunt for Keener. However, Keener is a master of deception and his mark led Jones to get trapped under the rubble of the exploded roller coaster. 
The division fought through the cleaner presence and caught up with Jones and her unit. It was a fight to the death, eventually leading to the defeat of Jones and Keener's escape. Shaver's unit was losing operators, as only Bonnie and Shaver were still standing. Black Tusk returned to Camp White Oak in an attempt to minimize intel ending up in the division's hands. The division, running a counter-operation, launched an operation to stop Black Tusk. Schaefer, overseeing Black Tusk's operation, saw this as an opportunity to test new candidates for his unit. Riley Knife Carter, Zach Luke Miller, Tegan Tails Price and Harper Hats Price. Although these BTSU candidates managed to clean up the site and neutralize the present JTF units, they were no match for the division, much to Schaefer's frustration. Shortly after, with their previous attempt in mind, Black Tusk launched another operation in the Manning National Zoo. Posing as a scavenging operation, Black Tusk prepared four units, Alpha, Beta, Gamma and Delta. In reality, it was a recruitment operation for Black Tusk members looking for a promotion to the BTSU. The division started their operation to intercept Black Tusk scavengers, but soon it was clear it wasn't a scavenging operation at all. Each unit set up a defense system in order to stop the division. Alpha unit favored mortars, Beta placed EMP jammers, Gamma set up automated turrets and Delta had a combination of the three. The division, although resistance was heavy, managed to fight their way through and defeat the four units, halting the Black Tusk recruitment process. It wasn't long before the division was called to Lower Manhattan as Keener assaulted JTF base in City Hall with Project Eclipse. Repenting the initial assault, the division went on a manhunt, chasing Keener through his four lieutenants. Black Tusk had been in New York City long before the Coney Island operation. Similar to Black Tusk supplying the hyenas in Washington DC, they supplied the last man battalion in their fight against the division. Once the last man battalion's leadership, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Bliss was taken down, the remaining operatives joined forces with Black Tusk. While the division was hunting down Keener, another rogue agent had joined forces with Black Tusk, Alicia Coswald. However, Fei Lau, acting commander for the division in Manhattan, managed to capture and detain her. I know you're working with someone. Ugh, careful, Fei. You don't want to make Isaac upset. He hit me like that again, he'll think you've gone rogue. You teamed up with the JTF. We do what we have to. You got a concussion? You're the one who isn't thinking straight. What's your mission, Agent? To save what remains? To ensure survival? That we live on? That when we finally get back on our feet, there is something left to stand on? Cool story, Faye. And how's that working out for you? It's hard. But we're stable. Sure. For now. What about next week? Or the week after? Or when you haven't had a Sarah delivery for months, and the medicine runs out, and the people who work together so well right now turn on one another? What are you going to do then, Faye? We will adapt. We will work together and find a way to move forward. And when they steal your tech and turn your turrets against you, what will you do then, Faye? What I have to, Alicia. I'm doing the same. You're not there yet, but you'll see we're the same. I'm not like you. I'm not a traitor. I'm not a traitor. I'm effective. I can see where this is going and who can actually make a change. You'll figure it out eventually. Or you'll die. Either way, my boys will find me soon enough and then you'll need to make a choice. What choice is that? To let me go. Or see if you're good enough to take on my team. Who are you working with? Still haven't figured it out. Thought you were better than this. I just want to confirm it. You scared? Never. You should be. We took out the LMB. I'm not afraid of Black Tusk. So you are as smart as you pretend to be. I'm a lot of things. You shouldn't underestimate me. Now, tell me about your first meeting with Schaefer. How do you know about Schaefer? You were a good agent. I'm a great agent. You're rogue. You betrayed the division. Just because my watch is red, it doesn't mean I've gone rogue. That's exactly what it means. No, it means that Isaac is not as smart as his programmer thought he was. You're working with Black Tusk. So are a lot of people. Black Tusk isn't the problem. Being a good little foot soldier and ignoring what has to be done is the problem. You're off mission, Alicia. No, Faye. You're the one who's off mission. We were recruited because we're adaptable. 
We can problem solve and have critical thinking skills. We are supposed to be autonomous. We're supposed to think for ourselves and find solutions to complex problems with limited resources. And part of finding solutions is recognizing what can be exploited and deciding whether the risk is worth the reward. You already lost everything, Faye. Why are you still holding on to this childish notion that being loyal to the Division is still the right thing to do? You want your agent back? I need a trade. What kind of trade, Agent Lau? Information. I'm sick of the rumor mill bullshit. I know Alicia. She was a good agent. She was a good person. She dedicated her life to teaching kids, and now she works for you. What the hell did you do to her? We didn't do anything to her. I made her an offer and she took it. What kind of offer? I told her that anything she wanted, regardless of how ridiculous, we could find a way to get it for her. That our resources were vast and wide, that the people we work with are legitimate and are working toward rebuilding what is broken. Who do you work with? That information is not for sale. That's what you're asking, then I'm afraid our negotiations are over. It was nice talking to you, Lau. Fair enough, need to know. And tell me something else, and Alicia is yours. Go ahead. How are you getting supplies in and out of the city? Alicia Coswald had disavowed the Division and joined forces with Black Tusk. In the meantime, the Division managed to locate Keener to Liberty Island. Using the Staten Island Ferry, the Division planned to use one of the ferries to transport their agents to Liberty Island. However, Black Tusk intercepted the intel and was already at the terminal disabling the ferries. The Division managed to take out the Black Tusk units, disable the explosive and launch their assault on Liberty Island, but it was far from a smooth ride. Incoming ferry, point eight miles east. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy this. Fire at will. Shit, get down! <laughs> Black Tusk, under command of Max Schaefer, most likely related to Barden Schaefer, were on their way to Liberty Island and managed to intercept and eliminate the ferry the division was on. After the division crashed on the island, Black Tusk transported their troops and equipment onto the island. It was clear they were after Keener, but the million dollar question was, why? It could have been payback for his betrayal on Coney Island, but more likely Keener had valuable intel on Black Tusk and their mysterious benefactors, meaning he was their largest threat. Black Tusk deployed their entire lineup, including a Razorback. Using its drones, they would find and neutralize the Division's agents and Keener. However, the Division managed to fend off the endless units of Black Tusk operatives and destroyed the Razorback. Black Tusk then initiated their final assault on the southwest side of the monument. Their last Marauder was deployed, but Keener surprisingly managed to hack the Marauder and Warhounds and eliminate the last unit of Black Tusk operatives. With everything in their arsenal deployed and reinforcements never being able to arrive on time, Black Tusk retreated, leaving the Division and Keener to fight it out. Keener was planning to launch an Eclipse payload using a guided missile system at New York City to push the reset button, but in the end was defeated by the Division. Collecting Keener's watch, Anna, the AI for the Rogue Network, intercepted a hostile radio transmission. Schaefer, do you read? Listening. Fall back. Keener's dead. But he's activated the network. What's the damage? Parnell's watch is collating the data. Looks like it's all of them. Shit. More rogue agents. Just what we fucking need. No. It's perfect. This will bring the division to its knees. And that's when we'll end them, once and for all. Lau, through everything that happened, lost faith in the Division, disavowed the Division and joined Schaefer and Black Tusk. No intel could confirm when Lau made her decision, but judging by Schaefer's response, it wasn't entirely a surprise. 
Keener's death wasn't the end. Although the full scope of his plans aren't known, his rogue network was just the start and according to Lau, perhaps with some foreknowledge, she predicted it would bring the division to its knees. In turn, it would allow Black Tusk to eliminate their largest threat and finally realize their ambitions. Black Tusk's origins and timeline are extensive and in-depth. This was the second part of a three or four part series on the story of Black Tusk. Intel answered important questions, yet many questions are left that we will discover the answers to in the upcoming videos. The creation of this video in particular was very time consuming. Writing the script, so far only written up until the end of Warlords of New York, has already consumed 15 pages. Designing the motion graphics and editing everything together took weeks. And those are just a few parts of the process that is creating a video like this. So if you enjoy these videos and appreciate the work that goes into it, consider showing me some support in one of the following four ways. Liking or disliking, depending on what you thought of the video. Other than views, this shows me how much you like the content I put out. Subscribing reinforces your support and shows me you want more videos. Leaving interactive comments or feedback reminds me how I'm not just doing it for myself and shows how I can improve. And the last way to support me is to join the channel and become a member for one, five or ten dollars. Other than badges and emojis, members will have early access to uploads of the large projects such as short films and large lore videos. With that in mind, I want to say thanks to Jared Fox's gameplay library, Khalil Cheeks, Nervous Wrecked, Sparky22 and Karsten Block for being members of the channel. The more support I gain, the more time and energy I can invest in YouTube and in turn this will result in more frequent uploads and higher quality content. Whatever you decide to do, I'll be here because I like what I do. Thanks again for watching, peace out.